Hello, and welcome to today's show, Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, Gloria Burgess, international leadership expert and trusted advisor. Welcome to Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. I'm so delighted that you joined me today. Today's episode is all about being on purpose. We are going to talk about what it is, what it means, and why it's so important for people of all ages, why it's important in your family, at work, and with your friends. So, what does it mean to be on purpose, to live on purpose? That's a great question, isn't it? Being on purpose is about being focused, deliberate, committed, and aligned. Focused, deliberate, committed, and aligned with whatever has heart and meaning for you. In other words, being on purpose is about being intentional. Like anything else that you want to nurture that you want to cultivate as a habit, you have to practice, practice, and then practice some more. That's right. If you want to be more intentional about being on purpose, let me just tell you that now is the time. Don't wait. Today is the day. Now is the time to lighten your load, to drop tomorrow's worries, to say so long to yesterday's baggage. Why? Because today is enough. You are enough. Now is the time to make the most of every day. There are no guarantees how many days we will get. Now is the time to seek authenticity, to be genuine. Guess what? Being authentic, being genuine will set you apart. Now is the time to be you. Take time to discover yourself. Find your unique you. Now is the time to cherish your memories. Relive them. Learn from them. Hand them down to your children. Then go and add to those memories. Now is the time to cherish your family, treasure your time with them. Now is the time to look beyond yourself, to think of other people. Look where you can help and do it with selfless passion. Now is the time to try kindness, to step outside of your world. Chances are there are many, many people who are caught up in struggles. Now is the time to spread love. Why? Because it gives us meaning. It brings compassion and gives us new eyes. Now is the time to embrace your challenges. Look upon them as opportunities. Use them to strengthen your resolve, to gain wisdom and compassion. Now is the time to fight for justice. To stand up when you know something is wrong. To support others who promote righteousness. Now is the time to keep trying. When things are not going your way, believe in yourself. Keep going. Now is the time to watch the sunrise. Sense the stillness. Enjoy the warmth. Marvel at renewal. Now is the time to care for our planet. We hold its future in our hands. Make your commitment. Now is the time to find your inner leader. We all have an inner leader. We all have an inner leader within us. Now is the time. Now is the time to live in the present. Your time is precious. Spend it wisely. 
In other words, now is the time to be intentional. Now is the time to be on purpose. Now is the time to celebrate the amazing, magnificent music of your life. Because, as I always say, in the grand song of the universe, life is short and very, very precious. So make the days in your life count. One of the ways that I keep myself on purpose is to take time to reflect. In fact, I love nothing more than having a few hours each day or an entire day, an entire weekend, to simply kick back and take the time to reflect. Now, reflection, true reflection, is a time to look again. Traditionally, especially in Western culture, we take time to reflect at the start of the new year, right? Now, why do we do this? Because the new year is considered to be a time of new beginnings, a time of transition, doorways, gates, passages, and endings. In fact, our month of January is named after Janus. In Roman myth and religion, Janus is usually depicted as having two faces, since he looks to the future and to the past. So, in Western culture, and I probably should say Northern Hemisphere Western culture, we often think of January as an opening, the doorway to new beginnings, to transitions, and to endings. So January opens the door to reflection. Well, that's great. That's all well and good, right? However, you know what? We can open that door to reflection at any time of the year. We can step back and take time to reflect on our life whenever we want to be intentional about taking stock of where we are, where we've been, and where we want to go. Let me ask you a question. Do you know how? to be reflective? I often incorporate reflection into the courses I teach, and I always include reflection when I lead retreats. Why? Because reflection is one of the many ways we can slow down so that we can remember who we are, whose we are, and what's important to us. When we take time to pause and slow down from our typical hectic pace and to breathe, we actually usher in the spaciousness of time. We actually have the time to become conscious and aware and to digest and metabolize what we've achieved or accomplished. When we consciously and intentionally digest and metabolize who we are, whose we are, and what we do, we can actually then begin to integrate all of that into our lives. Now, reflection doesn't have to be hard work, but make no mistake about it, it is work. Here are some questions you can ask yourself to help you track digest, metabolize, and integrate the various arenas of your life. Now, I'm going to invite you to write these questions down. Okay, so grab a pad, pen, pencil, <laughs> your notepad, your iPad, whatever you happen to have. Here are the questions. What goals or milestones have I achieved? What goals or milestones have I achieved? What can I improve on? Where am I stuck? What is keeping me stuck or holding me in place, holding me back? 
Now, again, these are questions to help you track, digest, metabolize, and integrate the various arenas of your life. Now, I'm going to repeat those questions in case you were, you know, running around trying to get your notepad. <laughs> what goals or milestones have I achieved? What can I improve on? Where am I stuck? What's keeping me stuck or holding me in place? What's holding me back, right? Now, we all lead such busy, busy lives that our accomplishments, our achievements often get buried in the daily minutia. We forget or we don't even notice sometimes our own efforts. That's why I like to take a moment to remember all the people I've met, the meetings I've had, the conferences I've attended, the articles or posts or books I've written, the projects I've tackled, the things I've read. Doing so helps me become conscious of how I've moved forward as well as what threw me off track, right? The things that were not aligned with who I am and whose I am. Reflection can actually help you get clarity about how to stop living on autopilot <laughs> and start living the life you want, which is the kind of life we all want, right? And that's a life of satisfaction and contentment. Well, that sounds pretty wonderful to me. How about you? And did you know you can start today? You can begin nurturing and cultivating your own contentment today. That's right. Here's how you do it. Here are a few tips for cultivating contentment in your life. Now, despite what you see in the movies or read in romance novels or fairy tales, <laughs> true contentment doesn't just magically happen to you. Poof. No. That kind of life doesn't just magically appear. But it is something you can make happen. In fact, it's something you can actually cultivate. So let's take a look at what this is all about. Science tells us what spiritual leaders have known and told us for thousands of years. What's that? <laughs> we can all be happy. We can actually take charge. We can actually control our own contentment. Science tells us that circumstances make very little difference in how contented people are. In fact, research reveals that happiness, which is a key aspect of contentment, is due to personality. More importantly, we can change our thoughts and behaviors, which means we can actually learn how to shift our pattern. So yes, you can learn how to be happy, or at least happier, <laughs> right? Now, many of us believe that happiness is the result of having oodles and oodles of money, you know, being rich, wealthy, or being beautiful, or being blissfully thin, or being free from the very real dangers of being stressed out. But... Here's the reality. Most of the folks who are financially well-off, or so-called beautiful by the world standards, and even those who are less stressed, guess what? They are not happier, on average, than those who don't enjoy financial wealth, or beauty, or lower stress in their lives. People who are happy seem to know that their happiness is the result that their happiness is the sum total of their choices in life. Okay? So it's a sum total of the choices that we make. Those who are happy, those who routinely experience contentment in their lives, have built their lives and their lifestyle on a similar foundation. And guess what? You can too. Let's take a look at what I call the five intentional pillars of contentment. The five intentional pillars of contentment. 
The first pillar is all about devoting time and energy to your relationships. The second is appreciating who you are and what you have. The third pillar is about cultivating an optimistic attitude. The fourth, having a steadfast sense of purpose. And the fifth one, the fifth pillar is living in the present moment. So let's take a closer look at each one of these pillars. Now, the first one is devoting yourself to your relationships, devoting time and energy. One of the best gifts we can give to someone else is the gift of attention. For many people, that's what love is, attention. We can give our attention to those we love in many, many ways. These days, listening, simply listening, can be a huge gift. In a lovely little book called A Father's Book of Listening, Dr. Mark Brady teaches us how to be a great listener. In this book, Brady focuses on a father and son relationship, but one of the reasons I love this gem of a book (laughs) is that you can apply his lessons to any kind of relationship. His pearls of experience and wisdom apply to our friendships, our relationships with our teammates at work, our relationships with our spouses, even with people we don't know yet but would like to know better. He says, when we listen... When we listen to people, often what we listen for are the things we understand or the things we agree with. We actually find great comfort in discovering the ways that they are like us. Now, when our kids or other people say things or act differently than us, it, you know, can make us uncomfortable. And when they turn out to be very different from us, it can make us extremely uncomfortable. We don't necessarily like to see or hear about differences. Brady goes on to say a listening father deliberately seeks out and pays attention to the ways our kids are different from us. And that's the same thing we do in our other relationships, right? We begin to appreciate the ways they've been shaped, molded, and often distorted by culture schooling, family of origin, genetic makeup, and any number of unknown factors. Like snowflakes, no two people, no two children, out of the billions and billions are ever exactly alike. Now, after we've learned to listen to differences and to develop an appreciation for them, in our kids, our friends, our spouses, our co-workers, we can actually cherish and celebrate their special uniqueness. This perspective allows us to deeply appreciate the power and beauty in complexity and in diversity. Now here's another thing about contentment. And this might sound simple, but sometimes it's pretty hard to do. So what am I talking about? I'm talking about surrounding yourself with positive people. That's right. Surround yourself with folks who are satisfied and content. Did you know that being in the presence of a positive, contented person actually lifts your own energy? your own vibration, so to speak, which alters or changes your mood. It changes your energy. And by being positive yourself, you can actually charge up, so to speak. You can charge up the folks around you. You can change the atmosphere. And in this sense, you are actually giving something back. You're giving something back. And that's a positive change to the people around you. Now, that makes a wonderful gift that you can offer to your family, 
your friends, your coworkers, your neighbors. <laughs> How cool is that? Your family and friends and other loved ones help you celebrate the music of your life, your joys, your triumphs, your challenges, and your successes. Your family and friends and other loved ones also lend you their support when times are hard. Maybe you just received a, a difficult diagnosis from your doctor. Or maybe you just learned that your job will be cut or you'll be furloughed. Or perhaps one of your children is going through very difficult times in a significant relationship. Whatever the challenge is, your family and friends can be a lifeline. And although it's easy to take your lifeline for granted, your support network, your relationships with your family and friends need nurturing just like any other living, breathing person or thing in our lives. You can nurture and cultivate relationships and build up your emotional bank account, so to speak, <laughs> through kindness. Kindness in your words and in your actions. So be gentle and gracious with the words you use in conversations, in your emails, in your text messages. And if you must correct or offer a critique, take good care with the words you choose and to be gracious in how you offer your critique. Now, most of us probably remember this saying from childhood, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. Can I just tell you something? That is a lie. In reality, sticks and stones sometimes hurt far less than the words we use. Words can hurt so badly that even though someone hurled harmful, unhealthy words at you when you were very young, 6, 7, 10, 15 years old, now, as an adult, when you recall those hurtful words, the pain of memory that goes along with those words, the hurt, the shame, the humiliation, the emotion, and the physical pain of those words come flooding back, don't they? Dr. Maya Angelou reminds us that although we will forget what people say, we will never forget how they make us feel. That's so true, so true. Okay, so let's talk about pillar number two. And pillar number two is appreciating who you are and what you have. This is all about letting the folks in your life know, letting them know how much you appreciate them. Not just what they do for you. That's not what this is about. It's also about letting them know how much you appreciate their presence in your life. Let them know how delighted you are that they are part of your life. Now, gratitude is so much more than saying thank you, as most of you know. If you missed my episode on gratitude, be sure to download it and listen to it. Now, gratitude is all about recognizing and acknowledging the power of blessings. That means blessings received, blessings that are present right here and now, as well as all of the blessings that you will receive in the future. Gratitude is also about your sense of wonder and awe and deep appreciation and thankfulness for life. It's so easy to go through life without recognizing and acknowledging our blessings. I mean, let's face it, for some of us, we have to have something serious happen in our life, like a bad accident 
or serious illness or some other traumatic event to wake us up. To wake us up enough to appreciate the great people, things, and moments in our lives. Let me tell you something. Do not, do not wait for something tragic to happen to you. Wake up. Make gratitude a practice in your life. Make it a habit. Just like brushing your teeth, eating your meals, exercising, meditating. And I'm going to say begin today. Make your commitment. Each day, notice at least one thing, one thing or person or moment that has blessed your life. Now, if you find yourself being ungrateful or thinking about something negative or just, you know, thinking about something in a negative way, or if you find yourself wanting something that your friend has or your neighbor has, something that you don't have, instead of wanting and craving and desiring and yearning for what someone else has that you don't, do this. Be grateful for who you are, for your unique strengths and gifts and flaws, all of it. Be grateful for the friends and family you have. Be grateful for the apartment you live in, the house you live in, the street you live on. Be grateful for the family members who support you, the perfect strangers who support you. Be grateful for who you are and what you already have. And I'm not just talking about physical possessions. I'm talking about those qualities, those character qualities that are also a part of who you are. Sometimes we find ourselves thinking bad or, or negative thoughts about someone else. Sometimes even ourselves, right? Now, if that's you, instead of allowing that negative voice to rule, to take over in your head, I want you to substitute a grateful voice, a grateful thought for your negative one. For example, If your sister forgot your birthday, instead of throwing yourself a pity party and moping around and saying to yourself, my sister forgot to call me on my birthday, hey, substitute this thought instead. You know what? My sister has always been there for me through thick and thin, through good times and bad times, ups and downs. My sister has always been there for me. Well, maybe not all the time, but a lot of the time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sister. Before you go to bed, before you go to sleep each night, let gratitude be your last thought. And when you wake up each morning, let gratitude be your very first thought. Give it a go. You will be surprised and happy about how gratitude can actually change your life. So, when you cultivate and practice gratitude, you actually add to your contentment. Now, let's take a look at that third pillar, which is all about cultivating optimism. Now we know that some people are actually wired to see the glass as half empty. And other people are wired to see the exact same glass as half full. Now if you're one of those people who habitually sees the glass as half empty, then I encourage you to develop a new habit. (laughs) a new way of seeing, and a new way of being. Develop the habit of seeing the positive side of things. Do not let what's negative in the world filter your whole outlook on the rest of your life or on what's going on in the world around you. 
DeWitt Jones is a friend and an amazing photographer, and he reminds us to celebrate, to celebrate what's right with the world. Now, I just love that because what's good, what's right with the world, far outweighs the negative. If you're not a naturally optimistic person, it could take some time for you to change your pessimistic thinking into optimistic thinking. So be gracious with yourself. Be gentle with yourself. You can begin by simply becoming aware and by noticing your negative thoughts as they filter in. And as they filter in, as they come in, don't judge, just notice. The first step is just noticing. And as your awareness increases, you can then begin to ask yourself a few key questions. Is what is happening right now really as bad as I think it is? That's a great question, right? So when those negative thoughts begin to, you know, come in, flirt by, ask, is what's happening right now really as bad as I think it is? Another question is, how might I, how might I look at my situation differently? Love that one. Another question is, how might I see one, just one, positive in what's happening right now? Now, I love those how might I questions, because how might I is actually what designers ask themselves all the time. So in this way, you're designing, (laughs) you're designing a positive stream and interrupting, disrupting that negative stream. So how might I see one positive in what's happening right now? Another question is, how will I express my gratitude Again, gratitude changes everything. How will I express my gratitude? And another question you can ask yourself is, what can I learn from my experience? What can I learn from my experience? The fourth pillar is about finding your purpose. Now, people who have a mission or a sense of purpose show up differently than folks who don't have a mission or purpose. Their purpose could be caring for their family, being an exceptional team member, starting and growing a business, or writing books. Whatever their purpose is, they just seem to be more focused more focused, and more contented than those who do not have a purpose. It's been said that the two most important days of your life are the day you were born and the day you figure out why. Having a sense of purpose gives us our why. In the daily events of your life, Your day just goes better when you say yes, (laughs) when you say yes to the circumstances and opportunities that align with your why. If you're not sure about your purpose, about your why, or if you're kind of sure but not quite clear yet, here are a few questions to ask yourself. The first question is, is who or what do I love? Not like, but love. Who or what am I passionate about? Right? Now, this question is a really important one because your core relationships provide a sense of meaning and purpose in your life. So be sure to cultivate meaningful, life-giving, and life-affirming relationships and let go of those that are not. Okay. Now, it's also important because your answer to this question will give you a sense of what brings you satisfaction and contentment in your life. So who or what do I love? Another question to ask yourself is, am I engaged in work that I love? Or if you're a student, am I engaged in studies that I love? Right? Now, if you're like most people, and you're working, you spend at least 40 hours a week 
at work. Sometimes much, much more than that, right? When you think about it, you actually spend most of your waking hours working. So, that makes it even more important to be engaged in work that provides you with a deep sense of meaning and purpose. Another question to ask yourself is, what excites and energizes me? Now, if that's a hard question for you to answer, this next question will help you understand what excites and energizes you. Okay? It'll also help you determine who and what you love. This question can help you get more concrete. Okay? So the question is, what are my proudest achievements? What are my proudest achievements? Now, if you can make a list of your proudest moments, your proudest achievements, those special people, moments, circumstances, events, this list will actually point you in the direction of who and what you love and who and what excites and energizes you. For example, if I were to share my list of my proudest achievements, one of them would be having my daughter. (laughs) Another would be receiving my doctoral degree. Another would be receiving recognition and awards for my writing, the books I've written or contributed to. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And then if I review that list, I would actually find some very meaningful clues about what gives me satisfaction and contentment. What gives me my deep sense of meaning and purpose? My why. A final question to ask yourself is this. How do I want others to remember me? Now, this question should reveal to you what kinds of qualities you have. Remember, people will forget what you say or do, but they will remember what and how you make them feel. So ask yourself, how do I make people feel? Do I make them feel welcome? Do I make them feel good about themselves? Do I lift them a little bit higher? Do I express love? Kindness, generosity, and gratitude to those I know, to those I meet? How do I want others to remember me? Pillar number five is all about living in the moment. Now, a lot of people simply don't understand that today is a gift. I mean, they might get it mentally, intellectually, but they don't really live it. Today is a gift. And you know what? Tomorrow is not promised. That's right. That's what I said. Tomorrow is not promised. In other words, do not put off or postpone your joy. Do not wait for that day when your life is less busy or less stressful. Why? Because that day may never come. Instead, look for opportunities to enjoy your roses today. Look for chances to savor the small moments, the small surprises the small joys and pleasures of life every single day, 365, 24-7. We can learn a lot about how to do this by looking at and by listening to, by paying attention to children. Most of the children I know understand how to live in the present. In fact, they are experts at it. Children focus on the many delights, joys, and positive experiences that are happening right now in this present moment. We could all take a page out of that book. If we did, we would truly enjoy today instead of dwelling on the past or worrying about the future. 
We can also learn a lot by cultivating what Dr. Mark Brady calls beginner's ear. He describes this way of paying attention to the present moment as being open and curious. To gain a sense of what beginner's ear might be like, think about how the sounds of the world affected you as a small child. Can you recall what it was like on a warm summer night when you heard your very first cricket chirp? And then you heard the smaller details, the rhythm, the silence between chirps, and the answering call of the other crickets. Paying attention to and living in the present moment is paying attention to discriminating details. In fact, This is exactly what we must do to keep things from going in one ear and out the other. When we pay attention to and live in the present, we actually find the cure, the antidote, the remedy to our modern obsession with speed. Speed at any cost, it seems. And the resulting sense of loneliness and alienation that can result from speeding from one adventure to the next, from one relationship to the next, from one experience to the next without slowing down to pause, to inhale and exhale, to fully experience and metabolize and appreciate the amazing weeks and months the awesome moments, the many sumptuous and marvelous details in the days of our lives. Wow! We've covered a lot of ground today. So I just want to pause for a moment to breathe to breathe in, to breathe out, to reflect on and summarize these key notes about contentment, about being on purpose and living on purpose. Remember, the folks who routinely experience contentment in their lives have built their lives, and their lifestyles on the five pillars, the intentional pillars of contentment. They devote time and energy to their family and friends. They appreciate who and what they have. They have an optimistic outlook on life. They have a steadfast, solid sense of purpose, and they live in the present moment. So that's how you do it. That's how you live on purpose. That's how you make your life count. So that you can be the change you seek. Now remember, how you live is how you lead. It's how you do everything. You have the power to make your world, to make our world a better place. As you delve into your day, I sure hope that it is filled with love and joy and gratitude and grace. All right. I want you to be sure to listen to this episode again and again. And hey, be sure to tell somebody. Tell your family and friends. You can find me right here on iTunes, Audible, Alexa, SoundCloud, iHeart, TuneIn, Spreaker.com, Talk Network Radio, and so many other places. Now, if you happen to miss any part 
of this week's show, or if you missed last week's episode, you can simply download the recording and listen to it at your convenience. You can even listen to it on the go. Check us out at www.talknetworkradio.com forward slash hosts forward slash legacy living. That's talknetworkradio.com forward slash hosts forward slash legacy living. You can learn more about my work and legacy living make your life count by visiting the Gloria Burgess website. And you can subscribe to my inspiring words right on my website. Just scroll down a bit, look on the right sidebar until you see the place to add your email to subscribe to my weekly inspirations. It's that simple. So again, to learn more about me and my work, just browse a bit on my website or visit me on LinkedIn or on Facebook. And you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash dr for doctor dr gloria burgess phd you can also check out one of my ted talks at ted.com now before i close today i want to thank each of you for tuning in to today's episode for allowing me to share a bit about my journey with what legacy living is all about not just living and learning, but living and learning and serving so that you make a difference in your own life and in the lives of others. It's about being on purpose every single day, 365, 24-7. Legacy living is a powerful way to make your life count. Once again, I want to thank you for joining me for today's show. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, Gloria Burgess, and this is Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. Please join me again next time right here on Talk Network Radio for another show of Legacy Living, Make Your Life Count. Don't just count the days in your life. Make the days in your life count. That's what Legacy Living is all about. Have a fantastic day, and remember, make the days in your life count. God bless you. That's our show today. I'm your host, Dr. Gloria, Gloria Burgess. I hope you'll join me again next time. Until then, don't just count the days in your life. Make the days in your life count. That's what Legacy Living is all about. Here's to you. Have a fantastic day and be sure to make it a yes kind of day. Remember to celebrate the music of your life. Make the days in your life count. <laughs>